All right, guys, it's uh, Angelo Christian today. Uh, another great day today talking about how to build a winning team. Uh, it's a huge topic, uh, probably one of the most important things. No matter what industry you're in, uh, you're not going to most likely be able to do it alone. Uh, you're going to have to have a team to help you to to get wherever you want to go, whether you're an entrepreneur, uh, a small business owner, investor, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to need people. You're going to need great people to help you, uh, to get to the top. And, um, I, you know, I've been in business now for over a decade and there's some things that I've learned that are extremely crucial. Um, you know, by having been, you know, burned many times and now trying to, um, get better on recruiting, hiring the right people, uh, cause your business or whatever you're trying to build or grow, whether it's a church, uh, or a company, uh, or even a family, um, there are certain things that need to be followed uh, as far as even with the hiring uh, and recruiting process and and the culture. So I wanted to come and tell you about the, some of the things that uh, I've experienced in building building a team and now having a you know a seven figure business and now we're trying to get to eight figures and um, some of the stuff that I've learned along the way from my some from my own experiences and then some from uh, masters and uh, of business like Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, uh, Google, um, and so uh, uh, an amalgamation of all of that, uh, been able to help to kind of uh, put together uh, a blended recipe uh, for building a winning team. So that's the that's the basis of this discussion today is how to build a winning team. Um, you know, and so I, I think that the first thing to to realize that. Um, you know, like I said earlier, a team is everything, you know, you can't, you won't be able to do it alone. That's one of the things that Andrew Carnegie talked about in his biography is that you can take everything away from me, uh, but you can't take my, my company, my people, uh, because without your people, you're not going to be able to succeed and thrive. And so, um, and you won't be able to rise to, to where you want to go. So, um, you know, there's some some great things that I kind of want some great takeaways that I want to share with you out there if you're looking to build your company um, that that may help you along the way. Some things I've learned from, you know, again, working with many different people. So um, the first thing is uh, how we recruit is a little bit different. Uh, you know, the traditional way to recruit somebody is, you know, you have them come in the office and it's a one-on-one -on -one interview and it takes, you know, 30 minutes or an hour. And to me, it's just really inefficient. Really inefficient. It's a huge waste of time. So the way that we recruit is um, we do, uh, it's a, you know, a systematic process where we bring in, we call it an open house and we bring in, you know, 10, 20 people at a time and they come in and there is an intro where they watch a video uh, of the, you know, the the philosophy, the the origin of the company. It's about five to ten minutes. They're greeted by, um, you know, one of the executives of the company. Uh, we feed them. We give them, you know, like some snacks and some water. Um, and basically, and then we do a Q and A where we ask them questions about who they are, what their goals are, and they ask us questions. And then they go in shadow, uh, kind of walk around the office and kind of check and see how things are going. Uh, to get a feel for the culture of the company and what's going on. And while we're doing this all along, management is paying very close attention to the behavior, the mannerisms, the questions that they ask, who came late, who came early, uh, what are they focusing on? Are they playing on their phone? Or are they taking notes? Uh, and because when you're watching all this, when somebody's uh, coming into the open house, you're going to see who's actually has the best opportunity uh, to, to be a good fit. And so that way, and then also you're being much more efficient with your time because you're, there's 20 people in there as opposed to one. And you can kind of pay attention to see who's the best pick of the litter, you know, and, and what they're doing. So, um, so that's what we do. Right. And they'll come in and so, you know, some of them will see right away, Hey, their minds somewhere else or playing texting on their phone or they're, they came in for five minutes and they left. And you have some people that are all into it. They're taking detailed notes. They're asking questions. Um, and they're really enthralled with the whole process of, of what the job is. And so from that pick of the litter, we'll ask them to come back 
for a secondary interview. Okay. And in that secondary interview, it's, it's test taking time. So there's some key tests that I recommend that if you're in recruiting that you consider to give to people because I think that they're very valuable. And these aren't my tests that I create. It's what I've seen on, from learning from other uh, great entrepreneurs. Um, and the first one is uh, an IQ test. I, we do like to see an IQ, uh, ideally of at least a three and a half or higher. Um, it doesn't always have to be that we can make exceptions, you know, uh, but we do have them take an IQ test. Um, and then we also have them do Myers-Briggs, uh, which we think is really important. And then we also have them do something called the dark triad test. And then the other one is Hexaco. And we have them take these four tests. So that's Myers-Briggs, Hexaco, dark triad, and IQ. And these are all different, uh, variations to see, get an, a, basically an X-ray of the brain, uh, of that individual to see if we think they're going to be a good fit. And so we really like the dark triad and Hexaco and IQ. They kind of tell us, okay, if we hire this person, um, are they going to screw us? Are they going to be good? Um, you know, and, and the things that they test for. And, and for the most part, they've been fairly accurate. Um, so, so they go through all those tests and then there's certain things that we're looking for. And you can Google, uh, you know, these different tests and, and give them to your employees or your uh, potential hires uh, or even to your, you know, your friends or family, uh, they're great. They test on a lot of different things on, on the mind and personality and making choices. And basically, like, for example, dark triad, the three things that it focuses on um, is uh, narcissism, uh, psychopathy, and uh, Machiavellian. And those are things that, you know, you don't want high levels of that for people that are working for you, Right. So, um, and Hexaco is a great one uh, because you want people that it, it's, you know, probably, um, you know, uh, an advanced version of Myers-Briggs, uh, but it'll tell you uh, more about, you know, for example, there's a great section there um, on, um, on the mind and um, people as far as uh, one of the things that's very important in our industry is double checking things and having a very low error rate. And you want people that are more conscientious. And there's a whole section on being conscientious and aware. Uh, and you don't want sloppy people most likely working for you, uh, you know, for the type of job or company that you have. So you want people that have a very high score um, in conscientiousness. So um, so assuming that they pass, you know, with flying colors, uh, with all of those tests, then we have them come back for a third interview and that's basically uh, at an open table uh, with all of the team present and that individual. Um, and then we do a Q&A, like a roast, where we put that individual there and we pepper them with questions uh, until they're exhausted. And um, to see how they're going to handle and respond to the pressure of, you know, 20 or 30 people peppering them with questions. Okay. And, and then it's also allowing all of us on the team, because I like to have all of us, the key people making the decision if we're going to bring this person in and hire them, okay? Uh, because I might not see something or the other manager and another manager may not be able to see something, but somebody else saw something that, hey, this, is a, this person is not a good hire. Like there was a person that we were looking to hire um, a couple weeks ago and I thought, you know, he had a great personality, great skill set, everything. And one of the other employees told me that they saw him uh, by a tree uh, pissing outside in the street. And I was like, how is that? How is that even, how, you know, and she, they, she saw it. I didn't see it. And I was thinking, man, you know, and now that that wasn't a confirmation for me to not to hire him. But some other things came out later on about his personality that told us that we got to stay away. So it's good to get the team in there, ask a bunch of questions, tough questions uh, that you can ask people um, and, you know, see how they respond to it, see how they, how they respond, how they can handle those questions. Because, you know, the job that they mostly are going to be working is going to be pressure. Can you handle that pressure from your customers? Because they're going to give it to you. So we want to make sure that the person that we hire, can they handle it? So we, you know, we fire them with all those questions. And if they pass that, then we come back and we do a fourth round um, where 
now we'll, it's, an, it's an on-the-job uh, simulation training. You're going to have to check with your attorney or your state or whatever. Uh, but what we do is we have them come, and it's a, it's a you know, um, basically a five-day internship. It's paid. We pay uh, for up to five days to come work before we hire you. Um, it's a probationary to see how you're going to do on the job. Okay, so we're going to give you X amount of dollars per day. Come in and start shadowing, do the job, and let's see how you do. All right. And after day one, we're going to know if we're going to have you come back for day two. It's not a guarantee you're going to work five days. So we're going to come in for a day. Let me see what you're going to do. And if it's good work, then you can come back. Uh, if not, you know, thank you, goodbye. Okay. Um, so that's our process for recruiting, and it's it's really – massively changed that are reduced our um, uh, turnover um, and hiring way, way better people. And that's one of the things like, you know, that, um, you know, in the book, Good to Great, uh, that they talk about is if you have to micromanage somebody, you probably hired the wrong person. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I hate micromanaging. Um, I think like Sam Walton says, you have to look over the shoulder with people. I don't, I don't agree with micromanage. I don't like to do it. And if I'm doing it too much, that means I'm really nervous and worried that this person is not going to perform. And we probably need to talk to him and, and plan on his departure if there's too much micromanagement. So because if there is, then it's not, it's not worth it. And I think in the, in the shadowing after they pass all those things in the next five days, you're going to see if they are good enough to do the job or not. Uh, you don't need five days. You could probably see in a day or two. Um, so, you know, that's that's really the the other the great thing that I think as far as from the recruiting standpoint, that's essential for building a winning team is having them go through these processes and steps. Um, and then you from there, you know, the cream will always rise to the top if it's a great person. OK, so. Um, the, the thing is, now that you have this great person here, let's say that they went through the whole thing and they're great. Well, you have to, there's some stuff on you too. You have to provide great opportunity for your team. Okay. There has to be great upside. You have to provide great training for people, great culture. Okay. Because it's not just about, you know, the employer, um, uh, or, you know, making sure that the employer is satisfied, you have to make sure that that the employee has an opportunity, right? And that, okay, did you give him the proper training? Do you have, you, and that's why I'm, we have a, a, an online mortgage university with over a thousand hours of content. And that's what we do. We plugged them into that. We plugged them in the Grant Cardone Sales University and we teach them how to become a multi-million dollar effective producer. All right. So, because that's very, very important. And uh, because I've seen many companies, well, you don't train the people, you just throw them in the job and you expect them to do it. You're setting them up for failure. It's not going to work like that. So you have to provide great training, right? And great compensation package. There has to be a great compensation package based on their performance. All right. If somebody performs and they hit the goals, and they help you with building out the revenue of a business, uh, they need to share in it. I don't care what anyone says. If somebody's helping, they're truly helping, and they're putting sweat equity, uh, they deserve a piece of that pie. Um, nobody, the boss shouldn't get everything. You should be able to share it with the people that helped them to build it. And I think that most successful entrepreneurs would agree with that. Warren Buffett pays the head of Geico $80 million a year uh, for a reason, okay? Uh, because he's making, guy, you know, Warren Buffett billions of dollars with Geico. Um, the same thing with Disney. You know, Bob Iger makes fifty, sixty million dollars a year because he makes six to seven billion dollars a year for for Disney. So, you know, the the thing is that great compensation, great opportunity, great upside for growth. Okay, everyone in my company that's been with me um, year over year, their income's gone up, and I can proudly say that. There's a lot of companies that can't say that. Um, and I like to, ch I do challenge people. You can ask anybody that I work with or that works with me. I do expect a lot, but it's also because we're trying to do a lot. We're a small company. We're trying to grow, uh, so we can all have a better quality of life and the things that we want. 
Um, and that takes hard work. It takes dedication. It takes focus. Like we talked about yesterday, you have to have a lot of focus, a lot of energy to, about what you're going after. So, um, and you have to provide a great culture for people. You know, you know, if you some great books on leadership uh, is Laszlo's uh, Work Rules. Uh, he's the head recruiter for Google. Uh, How Google Works, another great book. Uh, I've done a review on that. Um, and you have to provide a great environment for people, right? And so, you know, where, you know, we do a monthly, um, you know, a, a monthly uh, company hangout where we go out to eat, we hang out and, you know, talk and, you know, shoot the crap and stuff like that. Um, and you also need to let people express how they feel too. It's not, it should never be just one-sided that, you know, the boss just says, you know, says how it goes and puts his foot down. But the one thing is, is that you want to make sure your people are productive. I'm not listening to somebody that's not productive and they're not making the company money. The, the, the way that the way that we have a very open policy with this, with our company, where we have something called a, a give to take ratio. Um, and in, in, in our business, it's five to one, you know, minimum that if I'm giving you $5,000 a month, you have to bring me $25,000 a month in revenue. Okay. If you're not doing that, then I can't keep you here. If I'm giving you 5,000 and you're bringing me 5,000, there, there's no, there's no benefit for our relationship to go on. Okay. So provided that that's happening, then you can have the key to the city and we'll help you to build you up to go further and further. But you have to have, you know, that type of merit first in place. So uh, culture is very important. Like, you know, one of the things that in our new location we want to put in, we're building out it with a restaurant and, a, uh, and um, an indoor chef. So we have a chef there and, you know, we want to have some different things there that are really cool um, for our team. Like we have a play area with pool, air hockey, uh, um, we have boxing, ping pong. Um, so I want to keep that going. I want to have like a lounge area uh, for the team if they want to hang out uh, just to make it fun. You know, uh, soda machines, you know, just a, a fun place to hang out. Um, you know, we can even probably, one of the things we'll probably add um, is, uh, you know, dry cleaning for people that need dry cleaning uh, or daycare. That might, you know, the things like that are very, very powerful. Daycare, dry cleaning, cafe. Hey, man, you're going to have happy, you're going to have a happy team. They're going to work really hard for this, for this community, for this culture. So um, that's that's extremely powerful. Yeah, if you have the, the funds to do it or the capital, I think it's definitely worth it to make a happy team, provided that those people understand they need to be productive. I'll, I will say that most people or a lot of people uh, could take advantage and not be productive and try to take from the company. And you, you and, and that's the you know the bosses, the management's job to watch out for that, because some people will take advantage and try to take more than they're giving. And those people need to be removed from the ecosystem. And so uh, hopefully you hire good people, uh, but sometimes, you know, you have to get rid of bad people and you want them out of the office of the organization right away. Um, you know, it's just part of the business. I don't like to do it, but it has, I have no choice. You have to do it. You know, otherwise you're going to contaminate your whole office. So um, anyway, this is our process for um, recruiting and growing a team. And so far, like I said, we've been doing this for the last year and it's been phenomenal. We've had great results with it. And uh, again, I've learned all this from reading these different books, you know, uh, Extreme Ownership, um, you know, uh, the Marine, um, the, uh, what's the guy's name that did Extreme Ownership, the Marine guy? You remember the the Marine? I, yeah, there, there was, I forgot the guy, the Marine that that's a great book, and that's that's a, a lot of this. What what they talk about is taking ownership, taking responsibility. Your employee needs to be taking extreme responsibility uh, to ensure that you're successful, to ensure that the organization is successful. So, um, I hope that if you guys are entrepreneurs out there, reach out to us. We'd like to help entrepreneurs grow and expand their business. Uh, that's one of the things that we do with the company is, you know, consult and help people to grow and expand. And if this will help you with your business, I think that's phenomenal. If you have any comments, leave them down below in the chat. Um, and, you know, you can, I would love for you guys to follow us on Facebook uh, and on Instagram and on YouTube. Our handle is Angelo Christian Investor. We come out every single week and bring out great content. Uh, again, this is how to build a winning team and thrive. Um, and so... 
We'll see you guys again next week. Thank you so much for checking us out. Take care and peace out.